Welcome to another important video of MCQ discussion for surgery final in BBS examination. In these videos, we will discuss about the MCQ points, the salient points which will be asked in your MCQ paper. So, the topic is hematochesia. Hematochesia is PR bleeding. PR bleeding is an important topic which is asked in your long cases, essay questions and also in the MCQs. In the PR bleeding, there are many aspects which you should know. The symptom analysis, the history examination and the evaluation, the management options, everything may be asked in your long cases. In the MCQs, the parts of those uh, theory sections will be asked. So, in this video, we will discuss about the evaluation of PR bleeding. So, this could be a direct multiple choice question or a single best answer question. So, you should know the exact management and the exact evaluation of PR bleeding or hematochesia. So, when the patient presenting with hematochesia, we should see whether the patient is hemodynamically stable or not. If the patient is hemodynamically stable, the initial investigation of choice is colonoscopy. In the colonoscopy, if the source is identified, we can do the specific treatment. In the colonoscopy, if the source is not identified, we should see whether the patient is having an isolated episode of self-limited PR bleeding and whether the patient is having iron deficiency anemia. Assume that this patient presenting with hemodynamically stable state, colonoscopy done, the source was not identified, but it is only one episode, so it is isolated, self-limited, and the patient does not have iron deficiency anemia. At that stage, we can just do expect and management. That we don't need to do any intervention, we can just observe. Assume the colonoscopy did not reveal any source but the patient has continuous bleeding so it is not self-limited not isolated and also the patient may be having iron deficiency anemia as well at that stage we can also do an upper GI endoscopy for this patient so in the upper GI endoscopy if a source is identified we can do the specific management in the upper GI endoscopy the source was not identified we can just evaluate for a small bowel bleeding because we have already done the colonoscopy, we have done the upper GI bleeding, both have not identified any source, so the pathology may be in the small bowel, so we can do the evaluation for a small bowel bleeding. So this is the management of for patients presenting with hemodynamically stable state. The patient presenting with hemodynamically unstable state or the patient may be having severe bleeding. So the patient's blood pressure is crashed, the pulse rate is high, the circulatory collapse is there. At that stage, initially we should do the resuscitation. So if someone asks you how do you resuscitate the patient, you should start with so it is an emergency. I will immediately attend to the patient and assess the airway, breathing, circulation, disability and expose the patient and after securing the airway and ensure the patient is adequately breathing, then insert two large poor cannula, assess the circulatory status and do fluid resuscitation like that we can resuscitate these hemodynamically unstable patients. And after the patient becomes stable, the next investigation is an upper GI endoscopy. So, if after the upper GI endoscopy, if any source is identified in the upper GI endoscopy, we can do a specific treatment for that. And if any source is not identified in the upper GI endoscopy, usually the upper GI pathologies causing PR bleeding is rare. It is not very common as the lower GI pathology. So most of the time in this patient the upper GI endoscopy may be normal. 
then we should see whether the CVF bleeding continues or not. So the patient is now stable, we did the upper endoscopy and if the CVF bleeding is there, then it is difficult for us to insert the colonoscopy. The colonoscopy will not see any pathology in those patients because the blood is everywhere. So the next recommended treat evaluation should be done with angiography. So if the facility of angiography is available in the hospital and the severe bleeding continues, we can do the angiography. So the angiographic view of the mesenteric vasculature will look like this and the arrow shows a bleeding point. So if any source is identified in the angiography, we can do the specific management. And if the angiography also does not find any source, so the upper G endoscopy became negative for this patient and also now the angiography also does not identify any host. So at that stage, even though the bleeding is there, we can proceed with colonoscopy. So if any source is identified in the colonoscopy, we can do the specific management for that. If in the colonoscopy also the source is not identified, so then we can see whether the patient is having ongoing bleeding or not. If the patient is not having any ongoing bleeding even after the upper G endoscopy, angiography and colonoscopy, then the pathology may be in the small bubble, then we can evaluate for small bubble bleeding. Even after these investigations, the ongoing bleeding is there. So we have done the upper G endoscopy, we have done the angiography, we have done the colonoscopy, but the ongoing bleeding is there, then the next investigation of choice is deep small bubble enteroscopy. So enteroscopy is a different endoscopic procedure which we can visualize this small bubble. So this is the place for enteroscopy in PR bleeding. So if any source is identified in the enteroscopy, we can do the specific management. And if a source is not identified in this enteroscopy also, then again we should see whether the patient is having ongoing bleeding or not. So if the patient does not have any ongoing bleeding after endoscopy, so we have not identified any lesion as well. So we can just do the medical treatment with life ion supplements. And if bleeding recurs, we can do repeat endoscopic evaluation. And even after the endoscopy, the patient has ongoing bleeding, but we have not identified any cause. So this is an indication for Michael's scan. So it is a form of nuclear medicine scan. So we can do red cells skin graphic. So with that investigation, we may find any bleeding point. And also, if the ongoing bleeding is there, there is a place for laparoscopy, laparotomy with intraoperative enteroscopy. Think if uh, the patient settled the PR bleeding. So, the patient initially presenting with hemodynamic unstable state, we did the upper GI endoscopy, the source was not identified, but the bleeding is settled now. So, at that stage, we can proceed with colonoscopy. And in the colonoscopy, if any source is identified, we can do the specific management. And a source is not identified in the colonoscopy, we can just evaluate for small bowel bleeding. So, this is the evaluation algorithm for a patient presenting with PR bleeding or hematochezia. So, I suggest you to go through again this video and write this algorithm by yourself and memorize it. So then you can answer any single best answer question or multiple choice question which is asked on this topic.